Hello and welcome to the Start Here podcast for web development. My name is Dane Miller, and we're here to teach you how to build a career in web dev. You can find us online at starthere.fm. So today, the first thing I want to talk about as a web developer is this concept that we need to have a growth mindset. Um, there's been books written on this and one that I recommend and I'm going to read some passages from here is called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, How We Can Learn to Fulfill Our Potential. It's basically a book of psychological studies on people, legitimate scientifically backed psychological studies that uh, uh, evaluated the growth versus fixed mind state people. And that's how they bucketed these two different groups of people. And the way that you can ascribe yourself to one of these buckets is the fixed mindset typically views a failure as the last, uh, the, the end of the line. So it's like the final failure. You, you didn't get into graduate school. You didn't get that job. Uh, you didn't get that girl. They view that as the final failure, whereas the growth mindset people will view that as a failure and then they make a critical next step. And the fixed mindset people, they just simply don't make that critical next step. That growth mindset next step is to simply accept the failure and then go about improving yourself in light of that failure and then try again. And it really boils down to being that simple. The entire book is dissects that in great detail. But again, it's really basically that simple. And if you're not the latter and you're the fixed mindset type of person, you should work on that as the number one thing to fix, really. So the first thing, the first thing I want to read is a little thing that says uh, that helps you evaluate which mindset you have. So the page twelve here we have grow your mindset. Which mindset do you have? Answer these questions about intelligence. Read each statement and decide whether you mostly agree with it or disagree with it. One, your intelligence is something very basic about you that you can't change very much. Two, you can learn new things, but you really can't change how intelligent you are. Three. No matter how much intelligence you have, you can always change it quite a bit. Four, you can always substantially change how intelligent you are. And it, you can kind of see what, what this is getting at. There's questions you can ask yourself like that. You can almost make up your own questions now that you know that type of framework. And by answering those questions, you can evaluate, are you a fixed mindset or growth mindset person? Everybody is probably a little bit of both, but you definitely will land into one of the two categories. If you're listening to this and you're struggling with web development, learning web development, you don't know which door to open, you haven't opened any doors, you're procrastinating, um, you're not really taking massive action towards becoming a web developer, that is primarily probably because uh, of your fixed mindset or your, you know, and it, the book actually breaks down fear as well, right? A lot of procrastination comes down to fear. And in the book, they talk about that. They say they did studies on people um, as far as shyness goes and other things that trigger fear response in people. And they found that the fixed and growth mindset people react the same way to fear. We all react the same. We get the we get the trigger, you know, the, the cortisol hits, we get the fight or flight uh, response. But the growth mindset people, they take it and they say, okay, we, we all experience this, boom. And then they take the next step, which is to conquer their fear, right? So that's the critical next step. And if you're procrastinating, you're not taking massive action, you're not coding every day. If you wanna be a web developer and you're not programming every day at home, say you have another job and you're listening to this because you wanna be a web developer, if you're not programming at least 30 minutes a day, then I don't believe you that you wanna be a web developer because the proofs in the pudding, talk is cheap, actions are everything and you're not, you're not producing those type of actions. So really guys, this fixed mindset thing versus growth mindset, this is huge. I would check out this book, The Mindset, New Psychology of Success. So now we're going to go through a different passage here to just uh, expand on this a little bit because I wanted to touch on this for a little bit before we dive into the five steps, uh, five different things or general areas I think can improve you as a web developer. Before we get to that, let's finish up here. Try to picture Thomas Edison as vividly as you can. Think about where he is and what he's doing. Is he alone? I asked people and they always said things like this. He's in his workshop, surrounded by equipment. He's working on the phonograph. He's trying things. He succeeds. Is he alone? Yes, he's doing this stuff alone because he's the only one who knows what he's after. He's in New Jersey. He's standing in a white coat in a lab-type room. He's leaning over a light bulb. Suddenly, he screams, it's work. It works. And he's alone. And the book is basically saying that 
all of these people that were, were asked this question agreed that in their mind, Thomas Edison was alone. And then the book says, Edison was not a loner, though. For the invention of the light bulb, he had 30 assistants, including well-trained scientists, often working around the clock in cooperative, funded, state-of-the-art laboratories. It did not happen suddenly. The light bulb has become the symbol for the single moment when a brilliant solution strikes, but there was no single moment of invention. In fact, the light bulb was not one invention, but a whole network of time-consuming inventions, each requiring the each requiring more chemists, mathematicians, physicists, engineers, and glassblowers. So even though Einstein or Edison was extremely smart, he still had 30 people around him during this time. And this just goes to show you sort of the, and what the book is getting at here is there was yet another study where they, they did this. They found out that people react this way to these types of questions based on the mindset that they have. So a growth mindset person would say that he actually, in their mind, was surrounded by assistants or people that worked for him in a laboratory. A fixed mindset person would reply exactly like the book said. Um, he's he's alone. He just had the idea. Boom, success. Like fixed minds. In another interesting study in the book, they go into how fixed mindset people often feel that if, in a relationship, if things just don't click, then there's ultimately a bad. That's ultimately a bad sign, and you shouldn't have to work really hard at it. There's this myth that like you shouldn't have to work hard at the, the relationship, and also fixed mindset people. If there's a flaw in in the partner in a relationship, the fixed mindset people will assume that that is like an unchangeable permanent flaw that le- that underneath has deeper issues, like deep seated issues. And the growth mindset people don't believe that at all. They they basically believe that you know, we're all works in progress, we're all growing together, and one thing doesn't really identify the person like a fixed mindset might as- associate. And the back of the book, they give a whole chapter or two on how to change your mindset, and they actually just do it by walking you through different scenarios. So you have a scenario where uh, you don't get accepted for a graduate program, you have a, a scenario where you don't get ex- uh, accepted for a raise at work, and they walk you through both the growth mindset and the uh, fixed mindset approaches to those problems and they do fix first because fixed and growth are the same like we said before with the fear we both experience fear they both experience fear uh, but then it shows you the growth mindset step second so that you can say okay both of these first ones are the same but then the real differentiating factor is taking that next step and conquering that and really utilizing it um you know, I, when somebody told me once, Alexander the Great said there are two kinds of people, conquerors and cowards. And that applies to this. Don't be a coward. Be a conqueror. So conquer your own brain. If you're if you're procrastinating, you're not doing the type of web development work that, that will lead you to a job, that will lead you to success, that will lead you to getting clients and having some sort of success, whatever way that you think that will be, then why not? Or are you a coward or are you a conqueror? It's really oversimplification to reduce it to those simple buckets, but it's a it's a useful uh, thought exercise because if you're seeing yourself as being a coward all the time, then you probably will stop. So I mean, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Everybody knows the famous like calves thing. So he had he was uh, ashamed of his calves because they weren't that big. And the rest of his body. So he would wear loose fitting clothing over the rest of his body and not like wear those ripped shirts so that he could show off. Instead, he would wear loose fitting clothing over the rest of his body, but he would always wear shorts to show people his calves so that he would always be a little bit embarrassed. So sometimes that works. So as we're thinking about these different types of mindsets, ask yourself, what type of person am I? What type of learner am I? You know, Peter Drucker's book, managing oneself you should read that you should know how you learn uh you should be executing experiments and it's not something that you just know you have to execute experiments are you learning from this podcast are you learning from audiobooks are you learning from reading are you learning from writing code which types of learning is best for you and then 10x down on that that's really the game changing way to approach this for me i realized that the way that I learned was being thrust into an environment and then being forced to have the skills necessary in that environment at that exact moment. Not everybody can learn that way or wants to learn that way or even should. Not everybody should learn that way. There is no best way to learn. Another one of my friends spent two years learning web development before he got his first job. I spent two weeks. And it 
it's not a better or worse thing. He is extremely successful right now. So he did it right for him. And I did it right for me. And you have to do it right for you. And listening to these podcasts is great. But unless you're writing the code, unless you're doing the work and putting in the hours, learning, going to IRC, going to the forums, re-listen to the first episode of Ruby on Rails, uh, the Start Here Ruby on Rails podcast, if you don't know what I'm talking about. If you're not going to the forums, going to the IRCs, engaging with the community that you want to be a part of, then you're not going to succeed. But if you're, if you're listening to this and you're in another job and you're working at your web development skill, if you're a lawyer or an accountant or something else and you're working every night at your web development skill, just like my friend was for two years, he was in another job, he was a manager, and he was working every night, two hours a night, and he wouldn't, he wouldn't miss a night, he wouldn't skip a night. Is that what you're doing? Because he succeeded. Are you, are you successful? If you're listening to this and you've already got a job, perfect. You're amazing. Keep growing though. Never stop. There's no ceiling except the ceilings that you make for yourself. So if you're in one job, strategize and think of how you can get to the next one. What's the next thing that you're looking forward to? What's the next thing that you're excited about? Just becoming a web developer doesn't have to be the end result. You could be managing web developers. You could be a project manager for web developers. You could be, uh, you could actually just like web development and want to go on to make your own company where you're doing web development at, for clients. That could be something that you want to do. So there, there's all these different things that we can be excited about and that you can use to motivate yourself on your goal, uh, uh, on your path. So before we move on, I wanted to read one quick thing. This is the Special Forces Creed. So in the military, in the Army, the branch of the military, in the U.S. military, there's a group of people called the Special Forces. And they have a creed, and I find this creed to be very motivational and inspirational when we're thinking about mindset. Right. So let's uh, let's read this. I am an American Special Forces soldier, a professional. I will do all that my nation requires of me. I am a volunteer, knowing well the hazards of my profession. I serve with the memory of those who have gone before me. I pledge to uphold the honor and integrity of all I am in all that I do. I am a professional soldier. I will teach and fight wherever my nation requires. I will strive always to excel in every art and artifice of war. I know that I will be called upon to perform tasks in isolation, far from familiar faces and voices, with the help and guidance of only God. I will keep my mind and body clean, alert, and strong, for this is my debt to those who depend on me. I will not fail those with whom I serve. I will not bring shame upon myself or the forces. I will maintain myself, my arms, and my equipment in an immaculate state, I will never surrender, though I be the last. If I am taken, I pray that I may have the strength to spit upon my enemy. My goal is to succeed in any mission and to live to succeed again. I am a member of the nation's chosen soldiery. God grant that I may not be found wanting, that I will not fail this sacred trust. You can see from that, and there's other creeds too, the Ranger Creed is also interesting, but you can see from that that these people... A lot of this can apply to us. There's a lot of learnings that we can take from other places and apply them to our web development career. And there's this book uh, called The Professional by Stephen Pressfield. And in that book, he goes through similar to what this creed said. He talks about how you need to be a professional. You are a professional. You need to maintain yourself in an immaculate state of affairs. You should not only be able to make progress, but you should be able to maintain your progress. Right, guys? This is very important, the concept of maintaining where you're at. If you're all only just making progress, but then taking two steps backwards every time, it'll take you 10, 20 years to get ahead. You really need to maintain your progress, become a professional in the way that you approach the problem, and then default aggressive mindset. A default aggressive mindset. And today, I want to just finish up with this section by reading one last thing. And this is something that just came out yesterday uh, or this past week, Wednesday of this past week. One of my favorite new podcasts that I would recommend everybody go check out is this podcast called The Jocko Podcast. And it's hosted by a guy named Jocko Willink. He's a former Navy SEAL officer that used to teach the Land Warfare School, uh, which basically is the preparation for war. So he had multiple deployments overseas, but then he came back and for many, many years he, he trained Navy SEALs on how to go to war. And he became totally obsessed with it. 
And he's one of these people that is just a gem. He's an absolute gem of a person. He's one of the most inspirational, motivational figures I've, I've ever had the honor of listening to, guys. I really recommend you go listen to this podcast. It is a, it is legitimately a life-changing podcast. And I just want to read one quick quote from his last episode. And this is coupled with what we just talked about. So being able to have the growth mindset to succeed, being able to maintain your success, and being able to become a professional with a professional mindset. And then lastly, having a default aggressive state. If you're default aggressive, you typically will win. And this is what this uh, quote from the Jocko podcast talks about. Here we go. You're going to get after it. You're going to move fast. You're going to think fast. You're going to outthink and outmaneuver the enemy. It doesn't matter if the enemy is blows life throws at you or a man with a gun or another military. If I think the enemy is going to attack me, I'm going to attack him first. And if I think the enemy is going to seize a piece of terrain, I'm going to be there waiting for him. And if the enemy is going to try to flank me, too late. I'm already flanking him. I don't view aggression as an outward attitude. I view it as an internal character trait. A fire in your mind that says, I am going to win. I'm going to fight and I'm going to battle and I'm going to use every single tool that I have to crush my enemy. And that tool might be fists, but it also might be guile. And it might be a frontal attack, but it also might be a covert assassination of the enemy, of the pain and the fear and the worry. And it could be a vulgar display of power, but just as likely it could be a subtle political maneuver. And that's what aggression is. The unstoppable burning desire, the fire to achieve success using every possible resource and tool, every asset, every strategy and tactic to bring about victory. To me, aggression is the will to win. And if that kind of internal and relentless aggression is your default mode, then you will win. And that is just the last excerpt that I want to go through tonight in this segment on the growth mindset. Again, that was by Jocko Willink of the Jocko podcast, episode 19. You can find that one. And if you're really interested specifically, it's episode 19. And then in the YouTube video the descriptions, they put time codes for all the questions. It's the very last time code. So if you jump right there, you'll be able to listen to that and listen to it, guys. He says, he says it way better than me. And so now we're going to move on to the five things that I think you really need to focus on to become successful as a web developer. There's no right formula. There's no right way to really truly be, uh, you know, on the path to, to success in any kind of industry. But these are the things that I think you can do, the five different areas that I think you could be focusing on. And we're going to touch on each one. I won't go into a ton of detail because I don't want this episode to take forever, but I will touch, we'll touch on each one. And we'll go through them all and hopefully you implement these different areas of focus in your life. Let's go. The first area is conferences, aka people, getting around people. This one is kind of the motivation one. So typically if you're not going to, there's a rule of thumb my mentors taught me that if you're not going to three industry conferences annually, then you probably aren't pushing yourself in succeeding or exceeding your, your expectations like you should be. And that's kind of a really oversimplified, weird thing to say. Like, oh, if you don't go to conferences, you're probably not succeeding. And obviously that's not true for a lot of people, but his general point was taken, was heated by me, and it should be heated by you. And the idea is that if you're around people, you will typically be able to have more motivation, especially if it's people in your industry, if, especially if they're inspiring you, they're motivating you, you're going to have more motivation for when you come home and execute on those things. You know, you're going to think, okay, I'm going to go back to this conference in a month and shoot, I better have, you know, the next step in my Y, X or Y figured out so that I can report on it to the people that I met at the last conference. You know, there's this motivational social factor and it doesn't just apply to conferences. You could take this and apply it to uh, your own friend circles. So let's say you go to a, a meetup. That's a good alternative to this. If you can't afford to go to a conference and not everybody can, an alternative is meetups, right? So the point is just getting around people and getting around the right environment of people that will 
help inspire or motivate you and fire your neurons in in a specific way for that industry. So you want to be going to web development meetups. It doesn't matter if it's Drupal or Ruby or Python or Django or Vim or Emacs, whatever it is, anything even tangentially related is going to motivate you. Um, Even if you're an introvert and you're a shy person, just go to these things and sit in the back. You don't have to talk to anybody. Just go and sit in the back and be part of the community over time. Even if you're super introvert, super shy, uh, you'll come, kind of come out of your shell and you'll meet a few people. And regardless, just being there, it will indeed motivate you. Okay, the second, practice. This is by far the most important one, guys. In the seasons of life, you have summer, winter, fall, spring. And in the seasons, most of you listening to this podcast are in the summer. of, And you can be in different seasons for different aspects of your life. So in your health, maybe you're like really fit and you just ran an Ironman. You're, that, that seems like the fall to me because you're looking good. You're reaping the rewards of the work that you put in during the summer in the gym right? The, the concept of the seasons of life goes back to like the farmer's seasons where in the summer you're working to plant the crops. In the fall, you're reaping the harvest of what you planted. In the winter, you're kind of hunkered down. You're, you're mentally prepared. You're framing. You're doing what you can for the spring when you like aggressively go about planting as many seeds as you can. Now, the interesting thing about this is When you go to look for a job, you're going to start this all over again. So when you learn enough web development to go approach a job market, you're going to be in the spring of your life in that that instance. So you're going to want to plant hundreds of seeds. If you adopt this mindset, I think it can actually help you a lot. So... Think, always think about like, am I, what season of my life am I in for this one area? And so if you're listening to this podcast, I believe you're probably in the spring or the summer, right? If you were already at a web development job and you're getting paid good money and you're creatively fulfilled and you're still listening to this podcast, then it sounds to me like you're in the fall of of that scenario because you're reaping the rewards of what you've done. But also it seems like you would have a growth mindset, right? As we spoke about earlier, because you're constantly trying to improve. So regardless of what you are, always try and evaluate yourself. Be like, which season am I in here? And if you're in the summer, don't complain that you're in the summer, right? Because you can't change the season, guys. You can only change yourself. So if you're in the summer of your life, you need to be practicing. If you're in the spring of your life, you need to be practicing. In the winter of your life, you need to be practicing. In the fall of your life, you still have to practice, but you reap the rewards of everything you've done for all of the other seasons. So as a web developer, you you should be listening to stuff like this every week. You should be reading about web development. You should be going to industry conferences. You should be programming every day. You should be embracing this Kaizen 1% a day improvement. If you're not improving 1% every day towards becoming a web developer, then what are you doing? You're actually plateaued and you're not making any progress at all. You can alternatively try to make more than 1% of progress per day, but that's unnecessary because as long as you're improving 1% per day, uh, you're, you're better than most people out there. So if you're focusing on that and every single day when you want to, when you're, you just got home from your job and you're, you're tired and you're beat and you just want to watch TV and crash, but actually you sit down, you open a couple of articles on Ruby on Rails you read those, you find out about a new technique that you uh, just read about last week but didn't have time to implement, and you pull that up and you code it for like 45 minutes to an hour and you still don't understand it and you're struggling and you're struggling and you still don't understand it and you go to bed without understanding it but you did the work, that's 1%, guys. Even if you don't understand what you're doing, do it anyway. Because that's 1%, that's how you grow, that's how you succeed here. If you're just going home you're watching TV, you're not opening the laptop and getting work done, then what are you doing listening to this podcast? This is not an entertaining podcast. This is a podcast where we're trying to teach you what you need to succeed as a web developer. And if you're not taking those actions, then just turn it off right now, right? Otherwise, tonight, you better be practicing. I don't care if you already have a job or you don't have a job and you want a job, it doesn't matter. 
you should be practicing every day. If you have a job, luckily uh, you're practicing for eight hours a day, so that's cool. So if you have a job, you're getting paid to practice, which is one of the awesome parts of being a programmer is you're constantly improving without even realizing it because every day they pay you for eight hours of practice. Now, if you don't have a job or you have a client or a freelance client, go ahead and make sure that you're practicing at least one hour a day, 30 minutes a day, even if it's 10 minutes a day. Consistency is more important than quanti uh, quantity. So quality is more important than quantity. Consistency is more important than quantity. The concept being what a little bit every day is better than a lot once a week. I I'm telling you that right now. If, you want, if you're trying to learn something complicated like the French language or the Ruby programming language or JavaScript or a new parsing library in JavaScript, try to do five minutes every day. Let's say um, one of your goals as a web developer and, and do set goals guys. So set goals and definitely have aspirations for yourself even though nobody is guiding you on this journey. That's what we're here for. So set goals. So say to yourself, okay, I know a little bit of JavaScript by next week. I'm gonna know you know, how to do this one thing. Set tangible, realistic goals. Don't be like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna know more next week. That's bullshit. Don't set goals that way. Instead be like, okay, I know this much. <clears throat> Here are the topics and, and things that I understand. Uh, but let's say I don't understand uh, patterns, like programming patterns. So let's say um, next week I want to learn and implement the open-close principle and programming pattern in JavaScript. Because let's say I know a little bit of JavaScript, but not a lot, and that's the way that I want to uh, learn more is by implementing this programming pattern. Or you're learning Ruby or even JavaScript still, and you want to build a website or web application. So you say to yourself, okay, next week, I'm gonna have explored and read the documentation and got up and running, not finished or started or made great progress, but just got up and running on a web framework. So you might use sales.js or Phoenix or whatever if you're in the JavaScript node world and you might use Rails if you're in the Ruby world and you're just saying to yourself, you know, I'm gonna learn this aspect of it. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna learn the routes. Um, next week I'm gonna learn more about the controllers. Next week I'm gonna learn a little bit more about this and this and this. This is mostly a game of patience. Consistent daily action is mostly a game of patience. I know you're not gonna want to do it this way. Nobody does. You're gonna wanna set up Rails and learn it all tonight. You're gonna to wanna to set up Phoenix and learn it all tonight. And I hope you have days like that. That's powerful. Like those days are great and do that. But remember, if you're doing that once a week and not working the other days or doing that once every three days, that's not the same. You need to be doing this every day, a little bit every day. I can't, re I can't restate that more. The only reason that programmers, once they get in jobs, continue to usually succeed is because they're learning every day. They're forced to learn every day. And if they're not, they won't succeed unless they do it on their own. So you know now that you need to practice. You know that you need to go to conferences, get around the right environment, get around the right people. The third section here is mentors. So the 30% factor. Um, there's a saying that you should be around people that 33%, 33% are on your level, peers, 33% are below your level, and we'll talk about that in a minute. 33% are above you, mentors. Um, you don't actually have to have in-person mentors, guys. You can you can go on Twitter and be um, enamored with somebody. You could look up to them. You know, say it's David Heinemeyer Hansen. He's probably a mentor for thousands and thousands of Rails developers without even knowing it. Um, Brandon Edwards, the you know Chris Coyer from C all these people that are really well known in the web development world, they're mentors to thousands of people without even realizing it, and that's great you should be part of that crowd that's learning from those people. You're listening to this podcast, you know, hopefully you're getting some kind of good information from this, but you should expand that outwardly. So for instance, always, um, so here's one little trick that you can always think about to make sure that you're learning from mentors in enough diverse environments. You can ask yourself, what is my surface area of education? So if it's only listening to podcasts, um, that's good but it's not great. If it's listening to podcasts, reading books, that's a little better. If it's both of those and 
listening to audiobooks, that's even better. If it's both of those and an in-person mentor, that's a web developer that's helping teach you once a week about like concepts that you don't understand, or you go to him with questions where you're just an IRC and you're asking questions with those skilled mentors in there, that's even better. And if you're going to conferences, that's even, and so it's like always better to do more guys. Um, but again, 1% a day. Don't overwhelm yourself at first and then not do it later. Always double check yourself. There's this great book on cognitive biases that I love called Poor Charlie's Almanac by Charlie Munger. And he talks about some of these concepts, how there's this bias in our brains to make us want to jump into something and then back out. And we typically do that a lot. I mean, if you're ever somebody that struggled with exercise, you probably had hundreds of weeks where you've started and then stopped because maybe during those weeks you went to the gym every day for three days and then you were for an hour a day and you were like, oh man, this is way too much, I'm done. You didn't execute the Kaizen 1% a day factor there. Where is the 1% in going to the gym an hour a day every day if you've never been to the gym before? Is that strategic, is that smart? Actually, I don't think you're thinking logically if you think that's smart way to do things. Because logically, you need to do things such that you don't break adherence. So if you're going to the gym for 10 minutes every day, if you're just literally driving to the gym, walking in, changing clothes, and then walking out once a day for one week as a way to mentally kind of condition yourself that going to the gym isn't pain or fear-based, then whoa, you're that's a winner. That's a winning mindset. That's a strategic general's mindset. Are you the general of your life, the commander of your life? That's the way a general lives by executing small experiments like that. Like, okay, well, I associate fear with going to the gym. I associate fear with programming and being a web developer because it's such a big project and I don't know if I'll ever get the job. Okay. Do one minute a day. Do literally drive to the gym, walk in, come back out. There's there no pain in that. Once you rewire your brain a little bit, you'll have way more success and be able to jump bigger hoops and and different stepping stones in this path that you're on. Okay, so we talked about mentors. How can you apply that to web development though? Really, IRC is great, Railscasts, any kind of video resource where you're learning about web development. Follow people on Twitter that you love, Adam Stachowiak, these people that create these podcasts like Developer T, Full Stack Radio, these podcasts and the people behind them. They're really inspirational. I mean, if you go to their Twitter, they've got websites. You can sign up for their newsletters. They're sending you value. I sign up for all of their newsletters and they always send valuable programming tips and information. And one of them actually is going through a series right now where he's sending programming patterns broken down in detail. And it's so good. He's putting it in a book. But if you're signed up for the newsletter, you get it right now. So why, you know, you why are you not signed up to a bunch of people like that's newsletter? That's mentorship. Are you getting mentorship in that way? Go to go to my site, sign up for my newsletter. You can sign up at the top usually. There's a yellow thing, dane.io. And we'll send you valuable content. So a lot of the problem that people have here is they say, who should I listen to? Okay, I get that mentors are important. They say, that's obvious. But who should I listen to? Should I listen to you, this podcast? Should I listen to that Adam Stachowiak guy that you just mentioned? Who should I listen to? Guys, that's, that's a fixed mindset way to look at it. That's a scarcity mindset way to look at it. What you should be saying is, okay, how am I going to learn from everybody? What is the what is the inverse? Like, what is the way that I won't be successful? Well, the way that I won't be successful is to focus on and obsess on one thing to the exclusion of all the other amazing things I could be learning. So how do we avoid that? Well, so one thing you could do is go to David Heinemeyer Hansen's GitHub. I, I do this very frequently. At once a month, I'll open the GitHubs to Tenderlove, David Heinemeyer Hansen, all these people that I view as unbelievable. They're unbelievable programmers. Tender, uh, Aaron Patterson, Tenderlove, he's one of the best programmers ever. And I can go to his GitHub and look at his commit history and see what he's doing and see what he's working on. Holy shit, that is amazing. That is so valuable to see what types of things he focuses on. I can go online and watch his conference talks that he spends 10 to 20 to 30 hours preparing. He wouldn't prepare that much if I asked him for an in-person session. If I asked Aaron Patterson, 
if, if he would require that I pay him like a thousand dollars because this guy is so valuable. But if if I was able to get a one hour, one in person coaching session with him on Ruby on Rails development, he would not prepare as much for that as he does his conference talks. So why aren't you watching those conference talks? And because you you should be there mentoring you in the same way that he would be if he was in person. It's just different. But you still don't need to blow it off or push it away as being any lesser. So really hold these things in high value. Open the GitHub pages. Look at the commit history for everybody that you look up to. Every, every language that you want to learn, go to that language on GitHub. Find the top committers. Open their commit history. Re- review it every day for 20 days. That's an experiment. What does that do for you? Well, the experiment could be the hypothesis is by reviewing the commit history of 20 JavaScript developers every day, I'll become more familiar with JavaScript semantics and techniques or different things that people at a high level are focusing on, therefore helping me to uh, quickly iterate on my own education. Uh, You know, who knows? That could be your experiment. Try it. So try to go through all those uh, different commit histories and see if it helps you. If it doesn't, stop doing it and switch to their conference talks. If that doesn't help you, stop doing it, switch to podcasts that they're on. If that doesn't help you, switch, read books that they've written. If that doesn't help you, switch, just constantly be looking for the way that is most beneficial to you to implement all these different five habits that we're talking about here. Conferences. If you're shy and you're an introvert and you know that you probably aren't going to learn a lot when there's tons of social stimulation, Guess what? There's remote conferences where you can sit in the comfort of your own living room and watch Google Hangouts and not be on the Hangout, but just simply watch and observe and take notes. If you are practicing and you associate the second thing, practice, and you associate a lot of pain and fear to that, and you know that you're somebody that requires a lot of extra motivation, a lot of extra breaking through your own shell of pain and fear, then try to execute little experiments to help you get through that. Like just program for one minute a day, two minutes a day. Program something that you already know how to do. Look up something, program it a hundred times until you're so good at it that it rewires your brain a little bit and you're like, wait, do I actually know a little bit about programming? Maybe I'm not as bad as I thought. Even though all you did was program the same thing a hundred times, it will still affect the way that your brain thinks about it and associates pain and fear to it. The third thing, mentors, same thing here, you know, associate which type of learner you are to where you get your mentorship from. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but definitely read Managing Oneself, do little experiments to figure out what type of learner you are, then execute, execute, execute those experiments over and over and over again until you find what is best for you, and then 10x, 100x, 1000x down on that. And then you are going to surpass literally 99.9% of the people in your industry attempting the same ladder and the same climb as you. If you do that, that is the golden advice, guys. If you do that, you will go so much faster, so much farther, so much higher than anybody around you. Okay, on to number four, teaching. So part of the 33% factor is being around people that are lower than you, people that you need to learn from. Uh, not just people that you need to learn from and people that are on your level, but people that are lower than you, that you can help teach. And really the, the main reason that I put this on here is that there's some kind of magic that happens when you teach somebody something, you have to learn it and understand it more than you thought you ever did. And I know that to be true myself. You know, I'm, I've done tons of Ruby apps for, for many, many years, but yet when somebody asks me, hey, how do I do this? I'm like thinking... Do I really know that as well as I thought? You know, it turns out, no, I didn't know it as well as I thought. And I should go relearn that and then I can teach it. So by teaching people, it's really a magic, it's really a magical type of experience. It will allow you to learn faster, to learn more clearly. It'll allow you to learn better. Always be focusing on who can you teach. So how do you do that as a web developer that's just starting out? So Today is your third weekend of learning programming. You're learning JavaScript. Okay, make a Twitter account. Talk about the things that you're learning. People that are one week in, they can read that and gain information from it. People that are two weeks in, they can gain information from that. You're three weeks. There are two weeks and one week. There's always somebody that's below you in the learning process. What is another way to do this other than just Twitter? 
you could reach out, go to different Slack communities where people are learning web development. There's a directories online of Slack communities. You could go to different IRCs. You could ask for people that have just started out. You could literally make a post on forums and IRC. Hey, who's between weeks one and five of learning web development? I'm at week six, and I just was thinking that there might be some things I could help you with. Reach out. People will reach out to you. And when they do, boom, you can start teaching them. And have a one week, every once a week, every every week, have a call with them and tell them to ask you their hardest questions. What are they struggling with the most about JavaScript or whatever? You're week five, they're week one. Don't think that just because you're week five, you don't know anything. You know what, you know, week five worth of material, right? So you can help them a little bit. If they ask you, I don't understand closures, and you're at week five, you're gonna be like, I don't either, buddy. Join the join the club. But you can say to them, you know, I don't know that, but because I'm at week five and I've learned other concepts like that, I can actually tell you the strategy that I use to learn concepts typically like that. And go ahead and tell them, here's what I do. I go to this website that always has good videos on this sort of thing. I write the code for two days in a row, an hour a day, just to kind of get it. And then I review my code and then I send it to a friend to review. You know, so. Because you're in week five, you're going to have implicit things that you can teach to anybody lower than you. So this is a real tr- a key. And not very few people do this. Very few people that you'll meet are doing this at, at any level, at any job, in any capacity, in any industry. <laughs> but if you're doing this, you will win. Guaranteed. The last concept, and then there's one more bonus concept uh, from a listener. and then, uh, But the last concept, number five, is priming. So this is something that Tony Robbins talks about and a bunch of other people talk about. For programming, though, it's really important. Um, Every day that you sit on a program, you're probably not going to feel like it. Um, There's this thing that really affected the way that I do physical training, and it was just a statement, a really small statement by somebody that I look up to, um, but it changed the game for me. It was Joe Rogan. He is a really in shape guy. He trains. Part of his lifestyle is to train physical training, and he said... In an interview on the podcast with Jocko Willink, actually, he says, it's a small statement. He said, every day that I go to the gym, I don't want to go. I've been going for 20 plus years and 99% of the time, I don't want to go. That blew my mind, guys. That totally blew my mind that somebody that I viewed as having such excellence in his physical body I thought he would be going to the gym and loving it. He would be shredded and he'd be looking in the mirror and he'd be kicking like, you know, so excited every day. And he probably is a little bit, but he said that he didn't want to go every day for over 20 years and he went anyway. That was a game changer for me because it gave me the okay to do something even when I didn't want to do it. And I I know that most people who listen to this are in the older generations because we, we tend to draw that type of audience. So you probably already know this. You probably already know that you have to do things even though you don't want to do them. But that statement for me was a real insight, especially as it relates to programming. Every day that you send out a program, you're not gonna wanna do it. So prime yourself, do a little bit of priming. And you know, Tony Robbins talks about this in the sense that he'll do breathing techniques. Um, you could do things like the four by four breathing, which is four breaths in, or four seconds in, four seconds out. You could do box breathing, which is like four seconds in, four seconds hold, four seconds out. They call this also combat breathing. A lot of operatives in the field will use this type of breathing. Techniques to steady themselves as they're shooting. You could do the same thing here before you go to program. When you're in the code editor, it's the equivalent of being at war with yourself, with your own self. There's another great book by Stephen Pressfield called The War of Art. In that book, he talks about something called the resistance. And the resistance is part of your lower, in his belief, your lower brain, your reptilian brain. And every time you start something, you feel this like resistance that's pushing against you. That's saying, hey, stop this. We could go have a snack. We don't have to really finish this method. We don't have to finish this programming because you know, we could switch back and watch a video about it. We, we don't have to do this hard work. We don't have to. There's always that in your brain. And if you're the type of person that's totally defeated that, that's so amazing. And I'm kind of not talking to you. If you're somebody that, there's certain people that have totally defeated that and they're 
like very brilliant and, and amazing individuals. But if you're one of those people that struggles, stops, procrastination, you know, limiting beliefs, the fixed mindset, if you can just rewire your brain a little bit to think that it's okay to not want to do this, I'm going to do it anyway for 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes or one minute or two minutes. Play with your own brain. When, you, when you're sitting down to read a book and your brain's like, oh, I don't want to focus on this, had such a long day, you say, okay, am I going to be the bitch in my brain or is my brain going to be harnessed? And you read for five minutes, you read for one minute, you read 10 pages. That's success. That's being successful. That's how you win and become the master of your brain, not the bitch of it. And programming every single day is super tough. And you're totally allowed to be the bitch of your brain some days, but not every day. If you're the bitch of your brain two days, three days, four days, that's a problem. You're going to fail. You need to be the conqueror. You need to master and control your brain. Every time you sit down to program and you hit that hard challenge, this is kind of like the reality of programming. It's also kind of like the, the reality of most things that you're going to do in life. There's jabs thrown at you. You're going to throw jabs back. The ability to move and dodge and stay in the fight is really it. That's the power. That's everything, guys, the ability to stay in that fight. So when you're in that editor and you're programming every day and it's struggle and it's a struggle and it's horrible and it's not fun, that's okay. It's not supposed to be fun. If you're thinking that, if you're an accountant and you're like, man, I want to switch to programming because it's going to make me feel so creatively fulfilled, it can, but guess what? The first two months, the first two years, the first four years, the first one month, whatever, it's going to be hard and you're going to hate it probably. You're going to not be having fun, but that's okay. 1% a day. Okay, so just recapping on these five topics, conferences, getting around the right type of people in the right type of environment practicing the Kaizen 1% a day factor, three mentors, 33% above that you're learning from in as many different formats as you possibly can, four, teaching, the magic of teaching the 33% below you, number five, priming for programming. And again, the best way for priming for me is just breathing. So again, I'll use those breathing techniques and I'll really just sit down and, and I'll think exactly what I said earlier. I'll just do this for one minute and I'll do the breathing, and then I'll do it for one minute, and that leads to more and more. And that's good priming for me, but find uh, priming techniques that work for you. Okay, so the last thing, bonus item number six, uh, listener Patrick recommended that we talk about IDEs and debugging. So I wanted to touch on this for a quick minute. Um, we're going to have a whole episode on debugging because it's a huge topic, but I want to really quickly just run through the IDEs that I use and ones that you might like to use and how I use them just very, very briefly, guys, and then we're going to have a whole episode about this, but Patrick wrote in was really excited, so I wanted to touch on it. Um, so I use, I switch between Vim in the terminal and Vim mode in JetBrains IDEs. So JetBrains is a company. They make IDEs for different languages. They make RubyMine, WebStorm, PyCharm, PHPStorm, other ones for C++. Now, all of these IDEs, they're fully featured IDEs for different languages, and that's why they're cool. But they didn't have Vim support for a while. And then somebody made a plugin. You can go to the plugin, it's totally free. It's called like Vim mode. You install that, and then you have Vim in those editors. So, and those editors are great. I use the RubyMine one, the WebStorm one, and then right next to it, I keep iTerm because sometimes I do Vim mode in the terminal. And I also use Emacs for other sort of data manipulation stuff um, with other languages. But WebStorm and RubyMine, I'm telling you, those are great editors. If you're a JavaScript developer or looking to be a JavaScript developer or a Ruby developer, try those two. And they're free trials. You can get them online. Those are great. Go to jetbrains.com. I'm not affiliated in any way with them. Um, another one is PHPStorm. So I know a lot of you out there are PHP developers checking out Laravel, checking out um, things like that. Uh, maybe doing WordPress development, PHP Storm is perfect for you. Um, these editors have a lot of features. Obviously, you could be the type of person that just prefers a text file. You could be using TextMate, Sublime Text, or Atom. Um, all of those are great. Atom, I love. It's a little bit slow for me because it's written in, in like a web languages, so it's a little bit slow, but it's still great. JetBrains products are written in Java, so it's a little bit different. 
So those are the IDs that I use and those are the options out there. Um, and again, we're going to have a whole episode where we touch on this a lot more, but I just wanted to quick, quickly just give you a sample of what I use. So along my dock here, I have the, the uh, GitHub app called Tower. I use uh, RubyMine, WebStorm, Terminal, and Paw. And those are the only things that I use for development mostly. So those are the things that I use. Let me know what you use. I'd love to hear. So there's going to be comments on the SoundCloud uh, link. If you're listening to this on the podcast, just go to dane.io slash startherefm. And there's all the SoundCloud links there. You can click on one and listen to it. So that's it for this week, guys. I know it was a little bit of a longer one. I hope you had a good episode and you got some valuable insights from this. Keep in mind that with anything that you're learning, Always, if you could just take away one gem, if you could just take away one thing from everything you're learning, that's also part of that 1% factor. So if all you got from this episode was one idea, like, oh, I wasn't utilizing mentors as well as I could be, or I wasn't thinking about coaching or teaching in my in my learning strategy, but now I am, that's huge. Just one gem and, and you're ahead, you're winning one gym a day. So that's it. Thanks for listening. If you feel like you enjoy the show and you want to support us, there's a couple of different ways that you can support us. We don't have advertising as you might know. So there's nothing that you need to buy, but if you, if you want to support the podcast, you can leave a review on iTunes, start here web development, and then just simply click on it. And then you can usually leave a review. Also, you could leave a comment on the SoundCloud links. Uh, Even if you don't use SoundCloud, um, that's just what we use. Again, this will always show up in iTunes for you. So you don't ever have to use SoundCloud if you don't want. But um, if you if you like it, you can leave a comment there. You could check out my website, dane.io. Um, it's always nice to hear from people. So if you want to email me also, miller.dane at gmail.com. That's dane spelled D-A-I-N. And also I'm on Twitter at Dane Miller, D-A-I-N-M-I-L-L-E-R. And we also have a Start Here Twitter account as well, Start Here FM. If any of those are of interest to you, feel free to follow them. I try to post a lot of inspirational, motivational things every single day on Twitter. So if you're somebody who's been struggling a little bit with getting started with web development, uh, check out me there and give me a follow and I will make sure to post uh, nonstop reminders to keep going and keep winning because that's what I need. I need nonstop reminders to stay aggressive and keep winning and keep succeeding. And you might too. Thanks guys. See you next time.